Hello everyone, welcome back to the Action RPG Lessons. This will be a short lesson to show and explain the practice that was assigned in the previous lesson. If you haven't done so already, please try to finish it on your own before continuing. Now for this practice, your first task was to add the background for the forest. Inside the Asset Store, you'll need to add the forest sprite, so I'm going to call this one Forest BG. And this is going to be a BG class. I'm going to name it Forest. And I'm going to set the sprite equal to that Forest BG sprite. Now I we'll want to increase the size just like we did for the last background. The scale X is going to equal 2, and the scale Y is going to equal 1.5. And if I test that out, it'll show up when we move to the forest room. Perfect. Next, we wanted to add the code to move back to the field. So we need to check if the hero's x is less than negative 500. If so, we're going to set the room to be the field and then set the hero's x to be equal to 500. Now, if we try that out, we can move back and forth between each room. Great! Now let's look at the bat. We wanted to give him a health and invincibility timer. His health was going to equal 2. And just like the player, the inv timer is going to start off at zero. Inside the loop, you'll need to count down that inv timer all the time. And we'll need to change around this collision. The bat is no longer going to destroy itself once it touches the sword slash. It's going to reduce its health instead. What we want to do is move this code somewhere else. We want to see if the bat's health is less than zero before we do all that. So let's write that code first. We're going to say if self.health is less than or equal to zero, just like the player. And if so, we're going to do all this code. So I'm going to press Control X to cut it, and then Control V to paste it. So, what happens when he collides with the sword slash? Well, first we need to check if he's invincible. So we're going to say if self.int timer is less than zero, then we can reduce his health and then set that invincibility timer. In this case, I'm going to set it equal to 30. So the enemies only have half a second of invincibility. You can change that however much you want. Now for the last part. We wanted to pick a random number and change what color the gem was sometimes. For that, we need to add another variable for a random number. I'm going to add some space here to make my code look good. And I'm going to pick a random number. I'm going to call it color num and it's going to equal a random number. Now you can use any range of numbers you want, but for this it's going to be easiest if we just pick a number between 1 and 3. So it can be either 1, 2, or 3. So if that color num is equal to 1, we'll use the yellow gem. If that color num is equal to 2, and I'm going to copy this line and place it there, and instead change this to blue gem. And finally, if that color num is equal to 3, 
we're going to use the red gem. Now if you haven't already, add those gem sprites to your assets. They're called gem blue and gem red. So now when I test it, oh, I got a bug. I forgot the self.inv timer there. If you were copying me, make sure you fix that too. Now if I test this out and grab my sword, that guy dropped a yellow gem, that guy dropped a blue gem. Perfect. And I can still collect it because it's still a gem class. It's just using a different sprite. In the future, we can look at changing the value of the gem based on the color of it. But for now, it's good as it is. In the next lesson, we'll look at what we call spawners, which will create lots of enemies for us to fight and gather gems from. I'll see you there.